Well, I've been humbled many times in my career, uh, and I'm sure I'll be humbled many times in the future, and the last three weeks certainly fits that category. Um, so I had long-term concerns for the last few years that uh, because of easy money, too much debt was built, being built up in the corporate sector. Um, when COVID hit, I was pretty much of the view that there was a good chance that the bubble had finally, the credit bubble had finally burst and the underlining, the unwinding of that leverage could take years. Um, I'm still of that view over the long term, but next week I turn 67. And um, if I have a view five years out, that's all, that's all fine and dandy, but I'm not even sure I'll be alive. So let's talk about the intermediate term. I did give a talk to the Economics Club, and I, I talked about how horrible I thought the risk reward was. Um, I would say that since that time, a couple of things have happened technically, which is part of my process. And I would also say I underestimated how, how many red lines and how far the Fed would go. But the great Marty Zweig, who I learned a lot from in technical analysis, had this thing called a breadth thrust. And early last week, um, the advanced decline on the New York Stock Exchange was over two to one for a 10-day period. That is an undefeated record on an intermediate basis. And, and what is clearly happening is the excitement of pre-opening is, is allowing a lot of these companies that have been casualties of COVID um, to come back and come back in force as, with a combination of hopes with the Fed money uh, and in particular a vaccine where the news has been very, very good since that economics club. And I think probably more important than the market here is, is that breath expansion and the fact that the rotation out of the COVID winners into the COVID leaders gives you a big, big breath expansion because frankly, there are a very limited number of large cap, but very large cap companies that benefit from COVID and there are hundreds of companies that get hurt by COVID. So that's why, say, the first 35% of the rally was led by the growth stocks. And now it's being led by, obviously, the last few weeks, the value stocks. Let me just say, you got to have an open mind. The health situation is ever evolving. Um, I don't think anyone, particularly me, knows how it's going to end up. Um, personally, I have still something like Amazon and Microsoft are my largest holdings, but I have the least growth weighting in my portfolio I've had maybe for six or seven years. Um, I don't want your viewers to get too excited about that because as some of your commentators pointed out correctly, I could change my mind in a week or two. This is very binary how this comes out on the health front, but I just think it's a fascinating time where if you get a vaccine, say by January, February, you get one distinct outcome within the market. And if you don't get a vaccine for a year or two, you get another distinct outcome within the market. Then you've got all the stimulus plans. If they deliver in July, you get one outcome. If they don't, liquidity falls off a cliff and you get another outcome. So as always, I'm staying flexible, um, but I've been far too cautious. I was I was up 2% the day of the bottom, and I've made all of 3% in the 40% rally, and I missed a great opportunity here. Won't be the last time, but um, those are my current thoughts, Joe.